So in today's video, I'm going to show you how to paint this cute little storybook character in Procreate. I'll cover the whole process, all the way from sketching to painting, and after you watch this video, you'll be able to apply the same method and paint any character from your imagination. So the first thing we need to do is create an initial concept, and all this is is basically just a rough sketch that's also colored in, and I make these using a five-step method. Step one, start by making a very, very rough sketch. You don't have to worry about the proportions of different elements, like the arm length or maybe the facial expression. Just focus on getting all the major elements in the sketch. Step two, basically this is just error correction. So I'm gonna go through and use the selection tool and the arrow tool to fix any major mistakes I made kind of in the layout of the illustration. For example, this is a good time to sort of change the position of the eyes or maybe the position of the legs, anything major like that. Step three, this one is pretty simple. We just need to roughly color in the sketch. I do this by making a blank layer above the sketch and setting it to multiply, and I just do all my colors there. Since this illustration is pretty simple, it didn't take much experimentation, but this is where you'd spend a little bit of time trying to find the best color palette. And once you're happy with how the colors look, just merge the sketch and the colors together onto one layer. Step four, once the sketch is colored in and everything has a kind of volume to it, this is a good time to do any major warping and adjustments like that. My camera did cut off during this process, so I didn't record the whole thing, but basically I was just using the warp tool and the liquify tool to stretch and shrink different parts of the concept until it looked right. Step five, finally, once our kind of rough concept is finished, we need to create a super smooth outline to use as a painting guide. So to do this, I just lowered the opacity of the concept, I made a blank layer above it, and then I just spent a little bit of time making a perfect outline just on that separate layer. And there we go. I think this kind of uh, outline here looks pretty good. Now just for convenience, I kept the original concept and just moved it off to the side. And I'll use this as a color reference. And then for the outline, I recommend setting the layer for that to multiply. And then you can lower the opacity just until it's barely visible. And then to start painting, I'll just make sure I'm on a blank layer below the sketch. And the painting process is also pretty straightforward. It just has five steps as well. And I like to start by doing a background wash first that just covers everything. So for that, I'm gonna switch my brush to the medium quill and I'll use a warm beige tone and I'll just do my best to fill this out and kind of stay within the lines of the sketch. It's okay if I go beyond it because I'll show you how to fix that in a minute. One thing I will try to do is do everything in one stroke. And that's because if I lift off my brush and go over it again, it'll kind of double up and you'll get kind of a little bit of a darker area there. So I'll do my best to do everything in one stroke. And there we go. As you can see, this area down here is much smoother because I never lifted my brush. But if this happens to you, it's pretty easy to fix. It just takes a little extra step. So what I'll do is I'll just go to a water blender. I think the last one there's good. And I'll just smooth over those areas until they disappear. Now for areas like this, where I've kind of totally missed my sketch, uh, I have a kind of a new technique that I'm using now. In the past, I'd have you erase this back to match the sketch, but I really like the edge effect uh, that this particular brush has. So I wanna preserve that. So to do it, I'm just gonna use the liquify tool set to push, and I'm gonna nudge all this uh, colored area just back in line with the sketch. I think this technique takes a little bit of extra time, but it's totally worth it because it has a really nice natural, authentic edge effect that comes through in the final illustration. And once this background wash is finished, I'll make a new layer and I'm just gonna repeat this same process and fill out all the main kind of colored elements of the illustration. I just wanna make sure they're all on separate layers. And again, if I go beyond the edge of my sketch, I can always fix it with the liquify tool. And there we go, all the major elements are filled out. And as I mentioned, I put everything uh, kind of on its own layer. And that's because in the next step, we need to shade everything kind of individually. Now for the shading, there are two types of shadows, soft shadows and hard shadows. The hard shadow is the simplest. 
and that's the one I'm going to do here on the pants. So I'll make sure the pants layer is selected. Then I'll grab the freehand selection tool and I'll just make a selection across like that. Hue saturation and brightness and I'll just darken it. And in most cases, uh, this kind of shading is enough, but sometimes I like to do soft shadows and I think that's going to work especially nicely on the jacket. So for that, I'll make sure the jacket layer is selected. Again, freehand selection tool. And I'll just select these areas kind of around the arms. Hue saturation and brightness. And I'll darken those a little bit. And this time to soften them, I'm going to switch to the water blender brush. And I'll just kind of run this along the outer edge of the shadow. And since the outline is visible, it's a little bit hard to kind of see what's going on. So I'm just going to switch that off temporarily. And you can see the soft shadow works uh, pretty nicely, but I think it's not quite enough. So I'm going to do a double shadow. So on top of the soft shadow, I'll do a hard shadow. So once again, freehand selection tool. And I'll select a much smaller kind of area. Hue saturation and brightness, and I'll darken it. And I'm not sure what it is, but this kind of double layered shadow effect really makes for an interesting look. And now I'm going to move on and fast forward through this, just using both of these shading techniques to shade everything in this illustration. And with the shading finished, I can move on and add the face details. And I'm going to do each kind of element of the face on its own separate layer, just above everything. And I think I'll start with the hair. So for this, I'm going to use the Shoto brush to lay down a kind of medium brown tone. After that, I'll go over it with the colored pencil brush to add some texture. And then I'll erase it and smooth it out just at the top of the hair where it disappears into the jacket. After that, I'll use the fine liner pen to fill out the eyes. And it's kind of a stylistic thing, but I do like to add a sort of rough black line at the top. I think it just makes them pop. Next, I'll make another blank layer and I'll do the nose. And for this one, I usually just lay down a kind of random red tone. Then I'll use the water blender to blur one side of it. After that, I'll use the eraser to sort of uh, cut out the shape of the nose. And then lastly, I'll mess with the hue, saturation, and brightness just to kind of dial in the color. After that, I'll do a similar process to make the rosy cheeks. And lastly, for the final detail, I'll just do the mouth using the colored pencil brush. Now the reason I did all these details on separate layers is because sometimes I like to kind of rearrange them. So if you want to do that, I recommend zooming out a little bit, then switching off the sketch, and I'll just go through with the arrow tool and kind of move the features around and see if they fit better somewhere else. And once you're happy with how all the features look, go ahead and merge them together onto one layer. And then I actually forgot it up until now, but I want to add some eyebrows, so I'll pencil those in using the colored pencil brush. And now that the face is finished, we can move on to step number four, which is basically just adding in any of the remaining miscellaneous details. And this is also where I usually add in the hands. And it's pretty simple to do those. I'll just make sure I'm on a blank layer above everything. And I'll start by just uh, kind of penciling them in using the fine liner pen. And I usually just draw a kind of mitten shape like this. Then I'll grab the eraser brush, which is also set to the fine liner pen and I'll sort of use this to carve uh, the fingers. So I'll start by defining the thumb. There we go. And then about uh, kind of halfway along the thumb, I'll start a line that sort of differentiates the fingers. Then all I have to do is just round the fingers and then shape the hand a little bit. Now proportionally, it's a little bit uh, too long. So I'll use the arrow tool set to warp and I'll just kind of shrink this down a little bit. I'm also going to uh, kind of bend the hand so they're sort of cupped. There we go. 
Then I'll finish up the hands by just creating a duplicate and then mirroring it so I can do the other hand. And I'll just mess with the position and see if I can refine it more. And with the hands finished, I'll move on and do the rest of the details. And for this illustration, it's just uh, some buttons down the shirt and then some lines on the socks. And I'll do all of those using the fine liner pen. And finally, now that the details are finished, we can move on to the last step. And this is basically just kind of correcting and fixing any little errors that happened so far. So to do this, we need to merge everything together onto one layer. So I'll just pinch it together like this. And I'm gonna start by using the liquify tool to fix any kind of small crooked lines. Now, I wanna pay special attention around the face and make sure the edge of this is really smooth. Uh, I think if it's too rough, it can make the character look kind of old and wrinkly. And then after that, I'm going to use the kind of distort and warp tool to kind of refine and adjust the overall posture. And there we go, this cute character is finished. Before I go, I wanted to mention a little bit about the brushes and the textures I'm using in this project. I did my best to design this video to be something you could follow with any brushes you want. But if you want to use the exact ones I'm using, I'll put a list of those in the description below. Also in the description, I'll put a free download link uh, for the sketch and the color palette from today's project, just in case you want to follow along with me exactly. As always, if you think I've earned it, please give this video a like. And here are two more Procreate illustration tutorials I think you'll love to watch next.